10 Ways Vegans Are Ruining the World Number 10. Environmental Footprint Eating lettuce is over three times worse in terms of greenhouse gas emissions than eating bacon. According to the United Nations, cattle rearing generates more global warming greenhouse gases as measured in CO2 equivalent than transportation. It generates 65% of human-related nitrous oxide, which has 296 times the global warming potential of CO2. Most of this comes from manure. Cattle rearing also contributes significantly to acid rain, human-induced methane, and emissions from land use and land change. It is a major cause of deforestation, especially in Latin America, where 70% of former forests in the Amazon have been turned over to grazing. And livestock uses over 30% of the Earth's entire land surface. Deforestation is one thing. To make matters worse, the herds cause degradation of the land. This wide-scale degradation, in turn, contributes to desertification. Couple desertification with all the water needed for the animals and their feed, and the livestock business is among the most damaging sectors to the Earth's increasingly scarce water resources, contributing, among other things, to water pollution from animal wastes, antibiotics and hormones, chemicals from tanneries, fertilizers, and the pesticides used to spray their feed crops. In the U.S., 55% of water use is for animal agriculture, and raising animals for food is responsible for 30% of the world's water consumption, occupies up to 45% of the Earth's land, is responsible for up to 91% of Brazilian Amazon destruction, is the leading cause of ocean dead zones, the leading cause of habitat destruction, and a leading cause of species extinction. Implementing the most innovative and sustainable farming practices right now are extremely important more than ever. By 2050, the Earth will be home to as many as 10 billion people, up from today's 7.5 billion. If massive increases in agricultural yield are not achieved, matched by massive decreases in use of water and fossil fuels, a billion or more people may face starvation. The Netherlands is the leader in horticultural innovation. The Netherlands is a small, densely populated country with more than 1,300 inhabitants per square mile. It's bereaved of almost every resource long thought to be necessary for large-scale agriculture. Yet it's the globe's number two exporter of food as measured by value, second only to the United States, which has 270 times its land mass. The global average yield of potatoes per acre is about nine tons, yet their fields reliably produce more than 20. Since 2000, farmers there have reduced dependence on water for key crops by as much as 90%. Each acre in greenhouses yields as much lettuce as 10 outdoor acres and cuts the need for chemicals by 97%. This is because lettuce has so few calories, around 15 calories a leaf. So someone would need to eat two whole iceberg lettuces to even get close to the equivalent calorie intake of two rashes of smoked bacon around 200 calories. When it comes to eating healthy, there are a lot more important things to consider than calories. We don't eat just to acquire energy, but to also maintain optimal health, protect ourselves from disease, free radicals, inflammation, and oxidative stress. Right off the bat, this video starts off with the least nutritious plant food. My wife and I have been vegan since 2010. In the last seven years, we've never purchased iceberg lettuce. Like the many vegans we know, nutrition is something we take serious, and the nutritional value of iceberg lettuce is basically equivalent to just drinking water. There's nothing really wrong with iceberg lettuce. It has iron and potassium and a very good source of dietary fiber vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin K, and folate. But it pales in comparison to dark green leafies we normally eat. And it comes with no side effects like bacon does. Bacon, on the other hand, comes with a long list of problems. Like all animal products, bacon is devoid of fiber, phytonutrients, and antioxidants. Bacon does come with saturated fat, which can increase the risk of cardiovascular disease, can raise blood pressure, contaminate breast milk with flame retardant chemicals, increases the risk of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, acute myeloid leukemia, gout, and gestational diabetes during pregnancy and may decrease lifespan. Even the fumes from cooking bacon may have carcinogenic and other disease-causing effects such as DNA mutation and postmenopausal breast cancer. The vacuum-packed bacon containers need preservatives and bacteria inhibitors such as harmful nitrites. The vitamin C added to enrich bacon are reported to make them even more carcinogenic. Reducing bacon consumption and increasing plant food consumption may reduce cancer risk, in part because plants tend to have significantly more antioxidants than animal products, such as bacon. Plant foods average over 1,000 units of antioxidants. Iceberg lettuce has a mere 17. While this is perhaps the least nutritious thing vegans could eat, it still has three times more antioxidants than chicken. Fish averages 11. 
salmon only has seven, and egg only has two, while plant foods average over 1,000. The best animal foods can do in the meat category is a serving of ox liver at 71. Yuck. Iceberg lettuce isn't bad though. It's just that it's about equivalent to drinking water. However, bacon, their suggested alternative, is what's called a high energy density food. The Center for Disease Control offers some examples. High energy density foods are like bacon, lots of calories in a small package. A medium energy density food is like a bagel, and low density foods are typified by fruits and vegetables. In general, the lower the better. Consuming diets lower in energy density may be an effective strategy for weight control. This is because people tend to eat a consistent weight of food. So when there are fewer calories per pound, caloric intake is reduced. A small drop in energy density can lead to a small drop in weight. And the greater the decrease in energy density, the greater the weight loss. Putting people on a traditional Hawaiian diet with all the plant foods they could eat, they lost an average of 17 pounds in 21 days, resulting in better cholesterol, triglycerides, blood sugars, and blood pressure. Reductions in energy density are associated with improved diet quality. For example, lower energy dense diets are associated with lower risk of pancreatic cancer. Lower energy dense diets tend to be of healthier foods, so we get the best of both worlds. As of 2013, the American Medical Association officially declared obesity a disease by identifying the enormous humanitarian impact of obesity as requiring the medical care and attention of other diseases. But the way we treat diseases these days involves drugs and surgery. Anti-obesity drugs have been pulled from the market again and again after they started killing people. This unrelenting fall of the pharmacological treatment of obesity. Despite growing recognition of the problem, the obesity epidemic continues in the US and obesity rates are increasing around the world. The latest estimates are that approximately 34% of adults and 15-20% to of children and adolescents in the U.S. are obese. Obesity affects every segment of the U.S. population. Obesity increases the risk of many chronic diseases in children and adults. The epidemic of obesity arose gradually over time, apparently from a small, consistent degree of positive energy balance. Substantial public health efforts are being directed toward addressing obesity, but there is not yet clear evidence of success. Because of the complexity of obesity, it is likely to be one of the most difficult public health issues our society has faced. Obesity isn't just a problem in the US though. In China, a transition away from the country's traditional plant-based diet was accompanied by a sharp rise in diet-related chronic diseases, such as obesity, diabetes, cardiovascular diseases, and cancer. The reason obesity is associated with increased risk of many cancers may be because of obesity-associated inflammation. And the reason why meat is associated with inflammation may be because of both the animal protein and the animal fat. In short, obesity is an issue all around the world today. When switching to a whole food plant-based diet though, you'll probably be inclined to eat just as much food with less calories, resulting in healthy and sustainable weight loss while eating the healthiest foods on the planet. There's definitely plenty of high calorie food though to turn to if that's really what you're after, like almonds, brown rice, chia seeds, chickpeas, cashews, coconut milk, dark chocolate, dates, flax seeds, granola, guacamole, lentils, rolled oats, peanut butter, pecans, quinoa, raisins, refried beans, sunflower seeds, tahini, tofu baked teriyaki, trail mix, walnuts, pumpkin seeds, squash seeds, and more. Like I was saying though, we really don't eat iceberg lettuce. Instead, we eat from the enormous plethora of options. On my site, veganwalk.com, I share that we have 17 beans, 12 berries, 28 fruits, 13 cruciferous vegetables, 10 greens, 18 other vegetables, 13 nuts, flax seeds, 32 spices, and 11 whole grains to choose from. And from this, thousands of recipes can be made. Regarding the environment, let's have a look at how bacon, pig farming specifically, impacts our world. The environmental impact of pig farming refers to the threats posed to the natural environment by large-scale pig farming. Industrial pig farming, a subset of concentrated animal feeding operations, poses numerous threats to the environment. Concentrated animal feeding operations house thousands of swine and other farm animals in confined areas where feces and waste often spread to surrounding neighborhoods, polluting air and water with toxic waste particles. Waste from these farms have the potential to carry pathogens, bacteria, often antibiotic resistant, and heavy metals that can be toxic when ingested. Pig waste also contributes to groundwater pollution in the forms of groundwater seepage and waste spray, which is essentially the usage of a sprinkler to spray vats of 
pig waste into the neighboring areas. The contents in the spray and waste drift have been shown to cause mucosal irritation, respiratory ailment, increased stress, decreased quality of life, and higher blood pressure. This improper way to get rid of waste is an attempt for concentrated animal feeding operations to be cost efficient. This presents an environmental injustice problem since the communities do not receive any benefit from the operations and instead suffer negative externalities such as pollution and health problems. The Agriculture and Consumer Health Department has stated explicitly that the main direct environmental impact of pig production is related to the manure produced. In 2014, National Geographic wrote a piece on the extent of the contamination in North Carolina. Swine cells in the state, second largest pork producer in the nation, were nearly 3 billion in 2012, and the state received attention in 1999 when Hurricane Floyd caused waste pods on the swine ponds to overflow, polluting water supply. National Geographic said that, despite the execution of a $17 million research project on waste in the area, no one in the state seemed to know what to do with the pig waste, which is a huge issue considering that there are nearly as many pigs as people. The average worker makes $8 an hour, making such a low wage that when they do fall ill from dangerous pathogens, they can scarcely afford to seek medical attention. Some workers have to blow the brains out of severed swine heads. The aerosolized mist of brain is blamed for dozens of cases of inflammatory neurological disease in workers who started with symptoms as mild as pain, tingling, and difficulty walking, and ended up as bad as having to be put in a coma for six weeks because of unrelenting seizures. It's known to be an autoimmune attack triggered by the exposure to aerosolized brain. A similar mechanism has been blamed for meat proteins triggering inflammatory arthritis in people eating meat. See, by eating fellow animals, we are exposed not only to fellow animal diseases, but to animal tissue that our body may mistake as our own. This may be an advantage to eating a more plant-based diet. By eating outside of the animal kingdom, dipping into the plant kingdom or fungi, not only do we not have to worry about getting something like Dutch elm disease, never has an autoimmune polyradiculoneuropathy been blamed on a head of lettuce. See, you can make a difference. Each one of us can make a difference right now. I'm not telling you what to eat. I'm just begging you to think. Because I believe that when you finally see the choices that you make affect you and me. Every day means something, just like everything means something. And when we live this way, the whole world can change. Every day you have a chance to be the best you can be. And every day builds you as it's a reflection of yesterday, tomorrow, and your entire life. And all you do ripples into everyone and everything around you. There's so much power in every moment. And when we embrace this fact, we grab a hold of life and live within all its beauty. Appreciate every moment, every breath, every sight, smell, sensation, experience. And with all that, appreciate all life. All life wants to live. And if we neglect this, we abuse our mind, body, and everybody, and everything, and the whole world cries in pain. Because in the end, it's not even about you or me. It's about everything. And this is the biggest way to live. This is absolutely how we can get the most out of life. Loving all life.